Hey guys, welcome back. So now this section is called Almost Linear Systems. So that means we're going to try to make nonlinear systems to act or employ methods that we've used before on linear systems. So, yeah, again, theme. It's just approximately nonlinear to linear. And so consider the nonlinear system, it's some vector x prime is equal to some function of uh, x vector. We want to treat it like a linear system, and we want to utilize everything that we've had from chapters 3 and 6 to find their phase portraits and describe them qualitatively. And so here are the steps for um, doing these kinds of problems. Very important, the first thing that you do is find your critical points. Um, and I showed you kind of how to do that at the end of the last video. Next is to find the Jacobian matrix. Um, I'll show you what that is. Uh, once we start doing these problems, but essentially if you had calc 3, um, you should know what it is. It's basically like uh, taking the derivative of a, of a matrix is how I want to explain it for this class. Um, there's a lot of applications, but you'll see kind of uh, what it's used for in this scenario. Uh, once you do that, you plug in your critical points into the Jacobian. So the Jacobian changes, it's a function of x and y. And so, depending on what your critical points are, you'll get a different matrix as a result of that. And then you just employ everything that you've learned so far. So eigenvalues, eigenvectors, face portrait stability. And then I want to make a quick note that the only time that any of this fails, as in you can't, uh, well, finding critical points will never fail. Finding Jacobian matrix will never fail. It's the analysis that you make from this that can fail. It's that if the real part of the eigenvalue is equal to zero, therefore it's a stable uh, center, just a stable node, then because of the sensitiveness, remember, uh, well, not necessarily from oscillating pendulum, but because just a little push in either direction can make it unstable or asymptotically stable, it's, it's too risky and uh, the mathematics shows that um, you can't approximate it as a linear system. And so that's the only, only way this can fail. Um, Check table 7.2.1 and 7.2.2 for, it has a nice review of stability and it tells you kind of what you're in and what you're about to see for this unit. Um, and so it's nice to just kind of have on hand if you're not sure if you're doing something correct or not. So with that, let's get started. So the problem is find the critical points, classify stability, and draw the face portrait. So, pretty typical stuff. Okay, uh, same thing, right? I'm going to first find my critical points. I'm going to set up that this is my first case. Sorry, first first case. I don't know why I wanted to do a four there. Uh, then I'm going to make these two my second case these to my third case and then finally the last two my fourth case okay so step i i guess is find critical points right so for case one we have four plus x equals zero and then ten minus x is equal to zero uh clearly this cannot happen right and one case has to be negative four and the other case has to be ten so, no critical points possible from here. Case 2 is y minus x is equal to 0. And then 10 minus x is equal to 0. Clearly, from the bottom, x has to equal 10, which means that y is to equal 10 on the top. So that's good. That's our first critical point. Case 3 is 4 plus x is equal to zero, and then y plus x is equal to zero. Sorry, I covered up the x with my three, um, but that's fine. So from here, clearly from the top, x has to equal negative four, which means that y has to equal positive four. And then my fourth case, let's see if I can do it right here, is y minus x is equal to zero, and then y plus x is equal to zero. Uh, hopefully it's obvious to you. You can just, if you plug in zero, zero, right? That works. 
that's the only solution here. So, zero, zero. Great, we got our three critical points. Now, second step is Jacobian matrix, right? So, let me go ahead and define uh, what the Jacobian is. So, in this class, you're always going to have to deal with dx dt is equal to f function x and y, right? And then dy dt is equal to a function g in x and y. Okay, so in order to construct your Jacobian matrix, which is going to be a function of x and y, as I said, it is... The first element is the f function, but it's partial derivative with respect to x. The element right below it is uh, function g, partial derivative with respect to x, and then this element right here is f, partial derivative with respect to y. Let me make sure that the y up th doesn't uh, connect. And then the bottom is g, partial derivative of y and drawing this vertical line to say you must plug in whatever point you have x, y. And that's what it is. It base, it's a kind of approximating what the system behaves because it's like its first derivative. Um, and so, yeah, that's all you really need to do. Uh, another key thing that I would recommend that you do is that at the very beginning, it's not that I don't trust you guys doing product rule, it's just that I know that during tests you make silly mistakes. And so I would recommend you just multiply this out, and that's fine. Uh, when I was taking like the advanced nonlinear classes, I, I did this too, just because I didn't want to risk you know simple derivatives uh, screwing up my score. So that's fine. So expand it, right? So this, and then this is 10y. Um, plus 10x minus xy minus x squared. And then you're in a much better position to take partial derivatives from here. Okay. So let me go ahead and just calculate this up here now that, I mean, you can see it. And I know some of you, um, like, you haven't taken Calc 3, and so this might be a little bit harder. But, I mean, we've done exact equations, so hopefully you know what you're doing by now. Um, but anyway, the top one is f, right? So then f x means that we only care about the x variable and that everything else is seen as a constant, right? So that means that the f x is going to equal minus 4, right, from that minus 4 x, and then plus y, because y is just seen as a constant in front of the x when we take partial with respect to x, and then minus 2 x, right? g of x, very similar. Uh, it's going to be 10 minus y minus 2x. And then, uh, do I have room? I guess, sure. Okay, f, I'm going to write up here, fy is equal to, you just do the same thing. So it's going to be 4 plus x. And then g partial derivative of y is going to equal 10 minus x. Good. You have your four uh, elements, and so you just put them in a matrix, and then you're good to go. So for this example, our Jacobian matrix is, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Jacobian matrix is just following this formula from up here. Minus 4 plus y minus 2x and then 10 minus y minus 2x 4 plus x and then 10 minus x. Alright, so then this means we need to start plugging in our critical points into this matrix, which is fine. 
So what we do now is just plug them in, and I think that's step three. So plug critical points into your Jacobian. Great. So first one that I'll do is the minus four, four point. And so simple plug and chug. Uh, in the top, the first element's minus four plus four, so that equals zero. Minus two times negative four, which is going to give me an eight. The second element is four plus minus four, so it's zero. And then, you know, not to bore you, there's going to be 14 and 14. Good. Now, this is what is known as the approximating linear system for this nonlinear system, overall nonlinear system, near the point negative 4, 4. That's all it's saying. It's saying that this uh, matrix that we have now, that's only, that is something that's linear, is now uh, an approximation for in the vicinity of minus 4, 4. Okay, that's all I, I'll say about that for now. Next point, let's do J, or sorry, 10, 10. And so, to skip some computation, I'll just write this. Minus 14, 14, 20, 0. And again, this is the approximating linear system for this overall nonlinear system near the vicinity of the critical point 10, 10. And then finally, we have J of 0 of the uh, origin. And so that's just going to yield the constants that were in the uh, Jacobian. So minus 4, 4, 10, 10. And again, approximating linear system near the origin. Now, the next part is to employ chapters 3 and 6 into this method. So I think we're up to IV now. Right? We're up to IV? Yeah. Okay, cool. So... Step four is now, I'm, I'll write as succinctly as I can, chapter three and six is what we need to do. So, again, for the point minus four, four, our matrix was eight, zero, fourteen, fourteen, right? Um, hopefully you can tell from here that the eigenvalues for this are eight and fourteen. Right, because of this zero over here, it's going to be 8 minus lambda times 14 minus lambda plus zero, or minus zero, whatever. Therefore, we know that lambda 1 is equal to 8, lambda 2 is equal to 14, which classifies this point. This is very important. The classification that you can get from here is now is exactly the same as the linear system. So in the whole nonlinear scheme of things, we can now say that because our lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 is greater than 0, the point minus 4, 4 is unstable. Unstable node. Because we don't have anything imaginary here. Okay? And then, again, similarly, uh, let's look at 10, 10. This is going to be minus 14, 14, minus 20, 0, right? Um, you know, you can solve out the lambdas. I really hope you can <laughs> at this point. Lambda 1, 2, in this case, are going to be minus 7, plus or minus i root 231, which means that the real part is negative, and it's, it's a complex number. Therefore, this is going to be an asymptotically stable spiral. Cool. And then let's look at our last one. It was the origin, right? Yeah. Origin is minus 4, 4, 10. 10. Uh, solve this out. This is lambda 1, 2 is going to be 3 
plus or minus root 89. Uh, so then just ask yourself, is root 89 something that's going to be bigger or smaller than 3? The answer is it's bigger. Therefore, we're going to be in the case that lambda 1 is less than 0 is less than lambda 2, which means that this is going to be a saddle, right? And really, I should say unstable saddle. And then to top it all off, uh, this is when you just put everything together and then make the phase portrait, which seems like a big step, and uh, it is a little bit, but if you master chapter 3 and 6, it's not that far of an extension. So step 5 is phase portrait. Now, first thing you do is you put your critical points. So we had one at the origin. We had another at minus 4, 4, so that's about right here, right? So I'll mark it, minus 4, 4. Those look like 9s. Why isn't it erasing? And then we had the point 10, 10, right? So that's, let's say it's over here. 10, and then maybe we can draw this a little bit higher, 10. Sure, over here. Okay, now, we know point 1010 10 is an asymptotically stable spiral. We know 0, 0 is going to be a saddle, and we know that minus 4, 4 is unstable. Now, you can go ahead and get your eigenvectors and uh, get your eigenvectors for each of those Jacobian systems, but if you think about this just in the sense that this whole, and this is what's called the global phase portrait, is it has to all be related to each other, right? And so if I'm saying that minus 4, 4 is unstable, it means that it goes away in every direction. So that means more than likely it's going to be like this, right? And then I know the origin is a saddle. So in one direction, it's going to be stable. In the other direction, it's going to be unstable. Because of this minus 4, 4 that is unstable in every direction, I'm going to bet that it's going to be unstable from that direction, but then, or sorry, stable with respect to the origin, but then unstable in the other. That's a fair assumption to make. And then I know that the point 10, 10 has to be asymptotically stable. Uh, and sure, I'll give it to you. It can be either uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. Again, just test uh, E1 and E2 for your matrix. But because I did this beforehand, I know that it's going to be something like this. And so, and besides, when, when you get this far, uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, most professors won't, won't deduct points for that. So just keep that in mind. But it's good to be to be exact. And so from here, you just it's now that you have so many critical points that they all just kind of blend into each other and you just have to fill in the in-betweens. So we're gonna have something that looks like this and it comes in and it uh, goes towards this asymptotically stable point and it you know rotates into it. Um, we're gonna have it from here approach the origin. From down here, it's uh, unstable and it wants to go down. Also in this direction, it's going to want to go down. From here, it's going to want to go towards the origin, right? From this direction also, it's unstable. And then from here, I mean all the directions from that uh, minus 4, 4 are unstable. And that's perfectly fine to me. That is your face portrait. The main, key, the key points are just to plot your critical points uh, with the correct stability. If you need to be more exact, find your eigenvectors to determine in what directions exactly it's uh, the, whether it's stable or unstable in a certain direction. And then just make sure they blend into each other because this is how they're now all on the same plane. And that's it. That's the beauty of nonlinear. It's just that you have a lot more that you have to deal with in chapters three and six, but it's essentially the same concepts. Cool. So the next few sections for this chapter uh, are just certain scenarios, certain, uh, I guess, biological scenarios, really, uh, that you can apply what we've learned here. And then from there, we move into chapter five. So see you soon.